The Ford Tractor Center Housing Assembly. This video is brought to you by Just 8 Ends Ford Tractor Parts and Restoration Service. This video details the assembly of the Ford Tractor Center housings built between 1948 and 1952. Begin by installing the differential bearing oil trough with two rivets pressed into the housing boss. Next, build the drive pinion assembly. Slide the pinion pilot bearing on the shaft and install the lock ring. Press in a bearing cup on either side of the pinion drive sleeve. And then place a roller bearing on the pinion shaft followed by the cup and sleeve assembly and another bearing. Follow this with a tabbed thrust washer, nut, lock washer, and second nut. Bend the tabs on the lock washer to secure the nuts. Bend one tab downwards over the inner nut and another tab upwards over the outer nut. Insert a dowel pin into the hole in the sleeve. Now install the pinion drive assembly into the center housing by lining up the dowel pin with the alignment hole in the housing. Fasten the drive pinion assembly to the housing with six lock washers and bolts. Attach 10 axle mounting studs to the right side of the housing in the location shown, followed by one extra long stud in the 5 o'clock position, which is used to mount the muffler bracket. Place the axle housing gasket over the studs. Note that the right side axle housing must be installed before the left side, as the right side axle must be in place to install the differential. Torque hex nuts on the studs to secure the axle housing and repeat the studs and gasket installation for the left side of the housing. Note, however, that all the left side studs are identical. The differential is now installed. Place it through the housing and push the differential bearing onto the right axle. Now mount the left axle housing by inserting the left axle into the differential bearing and secure the axle housing with hex nuts. If necessary, install the hydraulic pump oil tube through the top of the housing and press fit the tube in the hole in the housing base. Place the hydraulic pump through the housing bottom and mount it with lock washers and bolts. Assemble the PTO shaft and support next. First, place the roller bearing on the shaft followed by the sleeve. Place a snap ring into the rear groove in the support housing, followed by pressing the oil seal into the housing until it rests against the snap ring. Now insert the shaft into the housing until the bearing rests against the snap ring, and then slide another snap ring over the shaft and place it into the front groove. Place a gasket over the shaft until it mates with the housing face. This cutaway view shows the location of the installed components. The PTO shaft assembly is complete and can now be inserted through the boss on the rear of the center housing and then through the hydraulic pump gear cam. 
Fasten the PTO support housing to the boss with four bolts. Screw on the PTO shaft protective cover. A view of the PTO shaft installation from the front of the housing shows the shaft protruding through the pump's gear cam. The hydraulic lift assembly is attached next. Prior to installing the assembly, place the lift gasket on the center housing top face. Now carefully lower the lift assembly onto the center housing, being careful to properly position the lift's actuating arm so that it comes to rest in the eyelet of the pump's valve control lever. The actuating arm can be moved by adjusting the lever on the lift quadrant. A close-up of the actuating arm provides greater detail of the assembly. When the arm is set in position, mount the lift to the housing with proper bolts as shown. Now assemble the PTO cover and lever. Insert the actuating rod through the cover and place the lever arm on the shaft in the orientation shown. Line up the lever and shaft holes and press through a rivet to secure the lever arm. Mount the PTO cover to the housing with four bolts of the location shown. Then mount the brake pawl sector to the cover with two bolts. On the other side of the center housing, mount the dipstick cover and gasket with four bolts in the location shown. Followed by the brake pawl sector mounted with two additional bolts. Insert the dipstick in the tube. Assemble the drawbar clevis assembly. Insert a locking pin into the clevis shaft and then insert the shaft into the clevis and rotate a quarter turn to lock the shaft in place. Mount the clevis to the bottom of the housing with two lock washers and bolts in the center holes, followed by two bolts through the edge holes. Install the pipe plug fitting in the hole forward of the clevis. On top of the center housing, attach the rocker casting with a yoke pin secured with cotter pins on both ends. Attach the lift assembly's control spring yoke with the yoke pin and secure with a cotter pin. On the PTO support boss, mount two drawbar chain anchors. Finally, mount the drive shaft on the pinion drive shaft spline. The center housing assembly is now complete. To see more videos from Just 8 Ends, remember to like and subscribe.